Okay, we are out here at the ranch and today I'm going to do some penetration testing between 1.3 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz. I did a distance comparison between the two uh, a little while ago and a lot of people asked which was better at object penetration. So what I'm gonna try to do is uh, take it uh, beyond that uh, foliage. And hangar six is over there beyond those trees. But I'm also gonna try to go around and we'll see which is better. These are virtually identical setups. Uh, they're both uh, six inch T motor builds. Uh, they have the same exact components. The only difference is the video transmitter and video receiver. So on this one, we have of course, uh, 1.2 slash 1.3 gigahertz. It's the uh, Maytech uh, 600 milliwatt transmitter. And we have a base station with the uh, Maytech receiver. Over here, we have a 1000 milliwatt uh, 5.8 gigahertz. And uh, the corresponding uh, receiver over here, which is a rapid fire. All right, so let's get to testing. I'm just going to take a nice easy stroll over the fence line, over to the first airfield. I'm behind a bunch of trees now. So the uh, breakup is not so bad, it's manageable. So this is the first test out here behind a bunch of trees. You can see where we launched from, we're way back, we're hidden behind those trees back there, it's pretty dense. So you get a good idea of, of what it looks like. Okay, that's the first test. Next, I'm gonna step it up. This one's a little bit uh, harder. We are gonna go over here to Hangar 6. So it is already pretty bad. I might have to bail, we will see. Oh, this hurts. My rapid fires. Oh, wow, I cannot see. I can't even go behind the building. Well, that answers that. Yeah, let's come home. Okay, next thing we're going to try to do is go behind the barn. So we're going to get ourselves... Okay, so just to reset. This is the launch point. And now we're going to go behind an actual building. Okay, so 5.8 is handling this pretty well. Doesn't like it, but it's handling it pretty well. Still navigable. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay. Okay, gonna go down to the same point as before. We're back behind the foliage. And I think one of the problems is that it's not uh, multi-pathing or it's not uh, diversity. It handles pretty well out here. You can see where we came from and where we are. Now we're going to go out to Hangar 6. Oh, it's getting rough. That's pretty good. Before, it was really shaky here. All right, here we go. We're going to go behind the actual hangar. Oh, it's penetrating that really well. That's great. Before I couldn't uh, even get back behind this building, but uh, with 1.2, 1.3 I can. All right. Now we're gonna go behind the barn. There's a deer. 
Excuse me, buddy. Thanks. Okay, behind the barn. Seems to work just fine. It works pretty well, actually. If this was diversity or if this was a multi-pathing, then it would be even better. There you go. Okay, so the key takeaway is that 5.8 gigahertz interlacing, which is what the rapid fire is, was better at object penetration within a few hundred feet, but after that, the single antenna 1.3 gigahertz took off. 1.3 gigahertz was clearly better at object penetration at a distance. I could get behind um, um, a lot of water dense atmosphere, um, and by that I mean trees and foliage. And I could also get behind a building where the 5.8 gigahertz simply could not exist in that environment. And this right here is the perfect example of that the 5.8 just went out behind the building and the 1.3 just kept going. The interlacing rapid fire module is what kept the 5.8 gigahertz competing with the 1.3 gigahertz module. The Matek was a single antenna system. It wasn't even diversity, let alone interlacing. If the 1.3 gigahertz was interlacing, it would be the clear winner. Um, this is where the rapid fire really shines in situations like this. All right, there you go. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm just kidding, you're not gonna subscribe.